successful liftoff and landing are merely the starting points in the journey of a rocket. The true measure of a starship's long-term success lies in its ability to execute missions effectively. And recently, SpaceX officially announced that Starship will be deploying payloads in space during Starship Flight 7, which paves the way for potential billion-dollar missions in the future. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech, and thanks for joining us. So as we know, to maintain financial stability and launch frequency, about 60% of SpaceX's Falcon and Falcon Heavy rocket launches are dedicated to Starlink satellites. The remaining launches carry payloads including satellites and scientific installations from various customers and organizations worldwide. This positions Starship, the world's largest reusable rocket with the ambitions of getting humans to Mars, on a development path that addresses every aspect of its mission without concerns about funding throughout its future journey. Clearly, Starship must first serve as a revenue generator for SpaceX before pushing its grander ambitions. And that moment has now arrived. In SpaceX's latest update regarding the major changes for Flight 7, they announced that Starship's V-2 will deploy a simulated satellite in space for the first time. This is a crucial exercise related to the primary functions of the spacecraft's cargo bay. This mission involves deploying 10 experimental Starlink satellite models designed to accurately replicate the size, weight, and physical characteristics of the next-generation Starlink satellites. While these are not operational satellites, they have been built to test and validate Starship's deployment systems under realistic conditions. Using these experimental models ensures that the tests are conducted safely without generating space debris, aligning with SpaceX's commitment to responsible space operations. The models will be placed in LEO alongside Starship, enabling engineers to gather data on the deployment process in a complex and challenging environment. They're designed to splash down in the Indian Ocean, marking the conclusion of this phase of the mission and allowing for recovery and analysis to assess the precision and efficiency of the deployment system. Moreover, this mission provides a valuable opportunity to evaluate the dynamics and structure of payload deployment in low Earth orbit, offering critical insights for the design and execution of future space missions. Ultimately, successfully demonstrating the ability to deploy multiple satellites in a single mission will solidify Starship's role as a cost-effective and efficient platform for building and maintaining satellite networks, including the expansion of SpaceX's Starlink constellation. The satellites being simulated represent SpaceX's new V3 satellites, which are likely to be the first operational payloads that Starship will carry. Indeed, bringing Starship into operation is a pivotal step in SpaceX's plans to accelerate the deployment of Starlink Constellation and reduce the cost per satellite launch. Currently, SpaceX launches Starlink satellites using the Falcon 9 rocket. However, the next-generation V3 satellites are expected to be significantly heavier than the current V2 mini spacecraft. Thanks to Starship's incredible payload capacity, SpaceX has stated plans to deploy 60 V3 satellites per Starship launch. This would add an impressive 60 terabits per second to capacity in the Starlink network. Each V3 satellite will provide 10 times the downlink capacity and 24 the uplink capacity of the V2 mini satellites, and that significantly speeds up the overall performance of Starlink. To achieve the goal of launching the Starship V3 satellites, SpaceX has had to continuously revise the design of all components related to Starship's payload deployment to maximize efficiency during testing. First, the initial payload bay of Starship featured a massive clamshell door for deploying large cargo. However, that design was abandoned in favor of a new concept known as the Pez Dispenser, named after the rectangular candy and its associated dispenser toy. In some form, the dispenser has been present on every Starship flight to date, although the door was sealed during the first and second test flights. As for changes to the payload bay across different Starship prototypes, as we mentioned in a previous video, for older prototypes where SpaceX had no intention of carrying payloads, likely from Ship 31 and earlier, the payload bay was often repurposed with large frame structures to reinforce the vehicle's integrity. For newer ships, starting with Ship 32, the payload bay seems to have been significantly expanded by reconfiguring the interior with low-profile vertical supports, reducing structural impact on the payload volume. The results of these changes on newer ships is a considerably expanded lower section of the nose cone to accommodate more cargo. Second, the Pez sliding door. 
As a reusable launch vehicle, Starship requires a payload door that can open and close multiple times instead of a single-use deployment cover. While the Pez door appears similar between the two generations of ships, it's undergone several upgrades. The door opening's been redesigned with a rounded shape to eliminate potential stress points in the previous square design. The dual plating has also been simplified, with only two plate layers on the sides and a single layer on the top and bottom. The sliding door panels have been reinforced to prevent deformation. The drive system for the Pez door has also been redesigned for greater flexibility in opening and closing the payload bay. Finally, the Pez Dispenser. The Pez Dispenser serves as Starship's payload adapter for Starlink V3, allowing the spacecraft to carry a large number of these flat satellites into low Earth orbit. Before Ship 33, there were two variants of the Pez Dispenser, neither of which was used in flight. The upgraded Pez Dispenser, often photographed on an assembly platform, is a large white structure equipped with these access platforms and stairs. The structure is not housed within the spacecraft and is only used during the assembly and installation of the dispenser. However, continual upgrades are essential. SpaceX has redesigned it in simpler form, likely to reduce the weight of this structure as it will need to return to Earth along with Starship. All these upgrades will be tested during Starship Flight 7. The flight promises to be an impressive demonstration of the relentless effort toward attaining Starship's goals. Now, in the long run, Starship will undoubtedly serve as the key player in the space economy, offering more efficient payload deployment than any other space company out there. With a 150-ton payload that orbited around a million a launch, Elon has suggested that Starship could deliver payloads to orbit for as little as 10 a kilo, depending on the vehicle's flight rate and how much of the savings SpaceX passes on to customers. In comparison, SpaceX's Starship, with full reusability, could potentially be priced similarly to SpaceX's Falcon, which is around $67 million initially, but with a higher launch rate, the cost could go down even further. It has the potential to launch more payload and more crew members at a lower price than any other space vehicle ever existing, said Laura Forzik, executive director of the space industry consulting fan Astra Analytical. Furthermore, with its 9-meter-wide fairing and virtually unlimited payload capacity, handling big satellite designs is no longer going to be a challenge. Historically, almost every application in space has been constrained by something known as SWAP, which stands for size, weight, and power. Satellite bus manufacturers have been forced to use costly, lightweight components that are specifically designed for spacecraft that need to fit inside current rockets. A perfect example of this is the James Webb Space Telescope. In order to fit the required mission capabilities within SWAP constraints, the designers of the JW had to develop a highly complex deployable segmented mirror to fit within the volume budget, use expensive and novel beryllium mirrors to fit within the mass budget, and design low-power instruments and thermal conditioning hardware to fit within the power budget. This kind of complexity dramatically ups the cost of a mission. In the world of a starship, things will become a lot simpler. Instead of these complex, unfolding, segmented mirrors, you could use a large monolithic mirror. Instead of expensive beryllium mirrors, you could use simpler and cheaper materials with lower stiff-to-mass ratios, similar to those used in ground-based telescopes. Instead of expensive instruments, additional power could be used to make simpler and cheaper ones with more robust thermal conditioning capabilities. The potential for change exists across every type of mission in space. It will become possible to have a satellite bus platform that has more power, more payload volume, and more payload mass, but one that comes in at the cost of a small satellite. In a world with launch vehicles like Starship, satellite-based communications providers will be able to use the increased power to have greater throughput, Remote sensing players will be able to use more volume to have larger apertures, and national security missions will no longer need to make the trade-off between single exquisite satellites and constellations of low-capability small satellites. Although it's never reached orbit, Starship holds valuable contracts to carry its first satellites. In 2022, Japanese satellite operator SkyPerfect JSAT announced that it selected SpaceX's Starship to launch its Super Bird 9 satellites to a GTO as early as 2027. This isn't the first time that SpaceX or another company has floated the possibility of using Starship to launch customer satellites, but SkyPerfect JSAT appears to have become the first customer to sign a firm contract to do such. In 2022, an executive of mobile-friendly internet constellation startup ACT Space Mobile said that it had secured two launch contracts from SpaceX for its first operational Bluebird sats, but had only firmly selected Falcon 9 for one. 
In 2019, SpaceX Prez and COO Glenn Shotwell suggested that Starship could be used to launch Turkey's second domestically built comm satellite, although her offhand mention has yet to translate to an official agreement. In 2021, SpaceX bid Starship to launch NASA's tiny Tropics weather satellite constellation, amounting to just 56 kilograms, for a price somewhere between $9 and $20 million. After proving its reliability, this massive spacecraft will begin carrying out crewed missions. Polaris program, the third mission organized by commercial astronaut Jared Isaacman, will utilize Starship as the spacecraft for space exploration. And when it comes to lunar exploration, we certainly can't overlook NASA's Artemis III mission, featuring a variant of the Starship HLS set to land humans on the lunar surface in 2027. The next goal, far beyond landing on the moon, is going to be the journey to Mars. Until now, both the public and those involved in space travel have envisioned this as the exploration of a few astronauts on a cramped spacecraft. However, for Starship, it'll enable explorations akin to those familiar in space imaginations. Although SpaceX currently has no commercial contracts for Mars missions, the successful executions of lunar missions by Starship will undoubtedly pave the way for Mars. Starship flights carrying the first humans to Mars are optimally planned for the Mars launch window after the launch of the first two or more uncrewed Starship vehicles. Therefore, on human arrival on Mars, there will already be two cargo Starships on the surface. The second wave of missions can include two Starships carrying crew plus additional uncrewed cargo ships. The human Starships will have an order of 1,100 cubic meters of forward space, most of which will be pressurized for human habitation. 2,830 and an 800 cubic meter LOX tank and a 600 cubic meter methane tank with a stainless steel primary structure. The LOX and methane tanks could later become pressurized living space on the surface to Mars. We recommend that these first crewed starships each have about 10 to 20 people on board with an additional 100 plus metric tons available cargo mass per starship. Cargo carried on these flights will necessarily include additional equipment required for human health and productivity during the transit to Mars and on the Martian surface. These vehicles will also carry fully operational hardware needed to support the human Mars base, likely to include equipment for power production, water extraction, pre-prepped landing pads, radiation shielding, dust control equipment, and outside shelters for humans and equipment. Humans will likely live on Starship for the first few years on Mars until additional habitats are built, so the radiation risk has to be assessed accordingly and equipment planned to support this initial infrastructure. The first wave of uncrewed Starships can also be relocated and or repurposed as needed to support the people on the surface. These vehicles will be valuable assets for storage and habitation and as a source of refined metal and components. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.